Hey, welcome back to our Super Mario Brothers X level editor tutorial. This time we'll be covering um, custom flags, which can be accessed through the editor by pressing F1. And then you'll get this huge text document com that comes up that's basically just a big ol' uh, text tutorial thing. And if you scroll down quite a ways, you'll find list of NPC flags. This is what we'll be covering this video. I've already made this video once, but it was really long and stuff, so I'm gonna make this one shorter, so let's dive right into this, shall we? Basically what flags are, are, well, they can change an NPC. I, I'm kind of having difficulty describing them, so I'll just kind of show you. That would probably be better than me stuttering over my words trying to explain it. So, basically, what you do in order to use these is you go to the folder where your level is saved and then you create a new text document and then whatever NPC you would like to modify you name it the exact same as a graphics file of that NPC so let's say I want to edit the classic Super Mario Bros. 3 Goomba I would type npc-1.txt that's what I would name it now I'll open this up and basically um, here's the interaction flags. Let's say I want to be able to pick up the Goomba. Well, what I would do is I would type in grab top equals one and grab side, not sod, equals one. Well, 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 what does this mean? Well, grab top is basically a flag that means you can grab the NPC, or I should say, can you grab the NPC from the top? And grab side is kind of the same, can you grab the NPC from the side? So basically, this applies to all the interaction flags. If you type zero, then it means that it will not be able to happen. So if I put grab top equals zero, then you will not be able to grab the NPC from the top. If you put one, then you will be able to grab it from the top. And same for all the other interaction flags. So, now jump hurt. Will Mario basically bounce on the NPC and kill it? Just for fun, I'll put jump hurt equals zero. Although, since I'm going to be making this Goomba kind of solid, it, that won't really matter. Now, I won't cover all of these because that's what I did last time and it made like a 25 minute video that's just excessively long, so player block and player block top, I would like those, so player block equals one, player block top equals one, and then, so you know, uh, Mario will treat it like a block, basically. Now keep in mind that not all flags are compatible with every NPC, so you know every once in a while you might come across an NPC and a flag that just, they just don't want to work together, and you know, it happens and there's not much you can do about it. Um, and I'd say that this editor help thing does a pretty good job of um, explaining what everything does. Now, cliff turn, sure, I'll do cliff turn equals one so it doesn't fall off a cliff. Um, no, I'll keep that. No Yoshi, no Fireball, no Ice Ball. You want to get hit with Fire and Ice Balls. Mm, Yoshi stuff, no gravity. I want to have regular gravity. Speed. So basically you put speed equals and then one would be its regular speed. Anything below one would be slower. Anything above one would be faster. Zero would be pretty much stationary. So just for fun, I'll have a Turbo Goomba, I'll do speed equals three, because why not? Now, score. Um, basically, this one is, you put score equals, and then here it has a list of what all the numbers do, so zero gives zero points when you kill it, all the way up to 13, and anything higher than a 13 gives a five up, and, you know, it does, it kind of lists everything right here, and so I'll do, Score equals nine because I gotta get my points and stuff, you know. Now NPC appearance flags. I'll try to cover these a little bit more in depth because some of these may be a bit more difficult to understand than uh, interaction flags. So foreground. If you put one, then the NPC will be drawn in front of all other NPCs, and if you put zero, then it will 
um, it will not. Now I'm going to jump down here because those other options kind of go hand in hand to GFX Offset. Now basically what these mean are, um, if you put GFX Offset X, then basically whatever value you put here is how many pixels the, um, the graphics itself for the enemy will be um, off from the hitbox. So I'll show you an example. Oh, by the way, these lie, actually. Um, it should be for the offset X, negative 1 is left and 1 is right, as opposed to negative 1 is up and 1 is down, and then offset Y, negative 1 is up and 1 is down. So as you can see, they got those two mixed up. So, there you go. Okay, so I I really don't know why you would want to make the GFX offset. Oops, I don't know why you'd want to make the GFX offset this high. In fact, I really don't see that much of a use for these options. But just just to show you what they do, I'll just do this. So I have GFX offset X equals 100, which means um, that it will be drawn way to the right from its hitbox. So here I'll just pull up this regular Goomba, and as you can see if I place it here, it's, it's just all fine, you know, Mario will jump on it and its hitbox will be aligned with its graphics. But, if I just reload the level, now he's way over here. It's like, whoa, what in the world? Now, keep in mind, his hitbox will still run around, like, way to the left of him, and, you know, his hitbox will still be what you interact with, you will not interact with the, the graphic itself. All that it means is that its appearance will be drawn to the right, but its hitbox will still be in its original location and it'll still run around just like usual and stuff. Okay, now let's move on to the frames options. So frames equals, basically um, you just put frames equals and then the number of frames that you want the, the dude to have. So let's say, so normally the Goomba has two frames, you know, this is a frame and then and then this is a frame. But let's say for whatever reason you just wanted to have one frame. Well, you just put frame equals one. And then, um, once you, in game, it will just use this frame. So, you know, this frame right here will be ignored. And it'll just use this one frame. So, you know, it won't look like he'll walk in. It won't look like he's walking, it'll just look like he's, he's you know, gliding around or, or something. Now, frame speed. How fast do you want the frames to cycle through? So basically, if I put frame speed equals... Now keep in mind, 8 is normal. So if you have it set to 8, then it'll just cycle through at its normal rate. Anything higher will be faster. So if I set to 1, then the frames will cycle through really fast. And anything lower is slower, so if I put frame speed equals 25, for example, then it'll cycle through fairly slowly. Now, frame style. If I put frame style equals zero, then basically what that means is, well, the enemy will be, it'll, its graphics will behave like, like the regular Goomba, you know? Like, he'll have the same animation if he's going left than if he's going right. So, it, like, it doesn't matter what direction he's traveling, his animation will not change. Now, if you do, let's see, where is it, frame style equals one, then it will use the top half of the sprite sheet for when it's going left, and the bottom half of the sprite sheet for when it's going right. And frame style equals two is basically the, set, the exact same as frame style equals one, except that if you have it so that you pick up the enemy, then whenever you pick the enemy up, it will invert the graphics, or it will turn the graphics upside down when you pick it up. And that's the only difference between two and one. Now the width and the height option. Basically what these do is it allows you to modify the NPC's hitbox. So um, by default, the Goomba's hitbox is 32 by 32, because you know that's the size of his graphics, as you can see, 32 by 32. Um, and so that's the same as his hitbox. But let, let's say you want his hitbox to be two times that size, but you could do like width equals 64, and then his hitbox will be two times the size of his graphics. So you know, 
his hitbox will extend like um, like out here even though his graphics is just here and then the same for the height option you can make their hitbox either bigger or smaller you know depending on whatever you set the option to now the GFX height and GFX width option basically what this does is whatever you set this to is the basically it tells it that that's the graphics that you want to appear so I'll show you an example let's say I type in GFX height equals 16 well then that will modify the frame so that for every frame it will make so like say for frame number one this will be what will show up because it's 16 pixels in height and then for frame number two this is what will show up because you know once again it's um, 16 pixels in height and then since it only has two frames and you know each frame is 16 pixels in height it will completely ignore the um, the rest of the of the graphics file now, if I set the value to bigger than the sprite sheet then basically what will happen is let's say I set GFX height to 64 then this will appear for one frame but then what about the next frame there's no more room in the file for the next frame well, basically what the game does is it just uses transparency so one frame will be this whole image and then the next frame will just be transparency so now just for example let's say you want the Goomba to have four frames and you want each frame to be 48 pixels tall instead of 32 pixels tall so what you do is you come here to your text file and then put frames equals four and then you would do um, yeah you would do height equals 48 and then usually the height option modifies both the hitbox and the graphics so if you want the graphics to be different than the hitbox then you would have to do gfx height equals and then whatever value you want however sometimes that doesn't happen so I always just because I'm me I always do um, I always do the graphics height option in addition to the height option even though you probably won't need to so next what you would need to do is because you want each frame to be 48 pixels tall and you want it to be four frames you would just multiply 48 by 4 and that would get you 192 I think right 192 yeah my math isn't that bad and then um, what I would do is I would just select a 48 pixel area and then you would draw your first frame in here and then you would select um, the next 48 pixel area and draw the next frame in here and then just keep doing that until you get to the end of the sprite sheet and then there your four frames would be and then you'd be good to go so I'll just draw something real quick let's all take a moment of silence to marvel at this true beauty. This is way too silent. So yeah, I basically just um, edited the regular file and then the, the silhouette file type thing because the, if you're trying to edit an NPC it more than likely has one of these. And so, you know, now you just save them where your level is saved with the exact same name as the NPC you're trying to replace. And then, when you reload the level, hmm, did I do something wrong? No, I checked and I actually didn't do anything wrong, but the thing is that sometimes, even if you reload the level, the graphics still look a little bit funky in the editor. So, but you know, if you like edit it and see, that guy just, he just doesn't know what's up. But yeah, he looks alright in here and I can still pick him up and stuff just like I set the flags to and, and whatnot and hmm so it seems that if you pick up a guy and then you throw him then he acts like he normally should after you after you throw him like you know not including the, the flags so that's that's a little interesting thing but also I want to change the frame speed to like one so his eyes are just going all oh, funky. <laughs> Remember, feedback is always awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later or something. <laughs>